Hello, and welcome to today's episode of Date in a Blink, where we're hosting Teresa and Ben for a Blink date. What is Date in a Blink, you ask? It's a 10-minute, audio-only, blind-speed date experience. It's also a bit of a social experiment designed to move people beyond looks-based assumptions, curated profiles, and marathon messaging. We at The Blink Date want dating to be fun and inspiring for Blinkers and hope this podcast inspires you to try new ways of meeting people and dating. Will our hand-picked matches find love on these Blink Dates? Or will they say goodbye to each other after 10 minutes and never look back? If you're new here, we're so happy you could join us. If you're a regular, we're so glad you've returned. Before we jump into today's Blink Date, here's a quick word from our sponsors. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain a bit. It's totally free, and Anchor will distribute the podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and lots of other podcasting platforms. Not only that, but it has creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. It also lets you make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make your podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. We're here on Date in a Blink today with Ben and Teresa. I'm going to let you two dive in, but in case it's helpful to get the conversation started, I'm going to leave you with this question. What topic do you like to talk about that seldom comes up in conversation? Hmm, it's really interesting. I need a second to think about that. Yeah, me too. Huh. Um, okay, I think relationships with family or more so the friction points. Um, so I would say maybe like a little bit of the, the harder stuff that are a little bit more difficult to navigate around, um, with family members and relatives. Um, I think especially right now, I feel it pretty acutely because I haven't seen my family in two years. So immediately for me, a lot of it's, it's like, oh, when's the last time you've seen them? Have you been able to go visit them during the pandemic. Um, Mm. What I get asked a lot of, and and I haven't been able to, so I miss them a lot. Um, But then, you know, there's a lot of underlying things. And yeah, I think that's always not talked about a lot um, because obviously you have to be at quite a a personal level with the other person. Um, And yeah, sometimes it's just like not the easiest conversation. So um, Mm. that that would be my not often discussed topic. Yeah. My mind went in a a really different direction. I went to sort of like all the shower thoughts that I might have. (laughs) Yeah. And like things are just like sort of like too bizarre and out there to talk about on, on uh, a date. Um, Like on a recent date, I had a long conversation about what do you read into the way that somebody sneezes? Um, (laughs) <laughs> which is a very different vibe, but going off for like 30 minutes, having a, a deep in-depth conversation about that. Yeah. Um, for me, it's like, I think it's sort of like the, the strange things that sort of like pass through your mind and you're like, huh, like that's an odd thought and don't really give it any, any attention. Um, yeah. But then having really fun, just like going deep into that wormhole of this random thing that passed your mind when you were um, in the shower, just sort of wandering um right right and so are there certain body languages or I guess in this particular example how people sneezes that make you perceive them in a certain way or you know shed some light into their personalities and things like that this all uh I guess stemmed from as I get older feeling like do you like if I described like a dad sneeze like would you know what that would you have an association with that like to me, it's that like really like slow building sneeze that then like explodes through a room, right? Where like everyone stops and like looks because it was so incredibly loud. Right, like it um, reverberates. It reverberates exactly. Yeah. Like it just yeah. it even if you're in an open space, it just echoes, you know. Right. Um, and I've noticed again like, as I'm getting older, like I'm developing that as a trait. Like my my sneezes like, increasingly reverberate. And I'm, like, <laughs> I'm like, what does that mean? You know, is that like? Is that like a socially learned thing that as you get older, it's like, I should have louder sneezes now. Is there something happening? Is it just like part of aging? Um, that's that's hilarious. It's almost like an adult milestone that exactly. you're, you're reaching. 
Yeah, yeah. You, I just like you hear it one day, and you're like, oh, I must be, I must be getting older because mm-hmm. I have that, I have that sneeze now. Yeah, I've always been amazed by people who have the very uh, soft and almost like it's not there kind of mouse like sneeze Mm. where they it's not even that they've suppressed it but it's just so soft and barely audible that it's like did you did you just sneeze should i say bless you you know you know like it's barely even there happened yeah and the kind of sneeze you hear it and you're like did that work like did that do it for you was Mm -hmm. that enough (laughs) um like it's just like a squeak Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah Interesting. Yeah, well, I guess for what it's worth, my sneezes are very, um, I feel like categorically normal. <laughs> Does not <laughs> reverberate, nor is it like a little squeak. So it's it's quite typical of a sneeze. Mm, it's like right in that sweet spot in the middle. Yeah. I have found that recently when I do sneeze with my mask on, I'm still doing the habitual, you know, like sneezing into your arm, that type of mm. thing. When really, mm. I'm like, I don't really need to do that. I have my mask on. Yeah. That's the moment where like, when that happens, every instinct I have is like, don't sneeze into the thing that's literally on your face. But that's exactly what you're supposed to do. Yeah. And it's like, Ugh, this is maybe... Not the worst part of the pandemic, but one of like the small, like real, like annoyances of that of ah, oh, can't just freely do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear you. I hear you. There's a lot of times also. Actually, yesterday I um, I was at like a a soft opening of a gym, and um, they were taking photos, and it also came to me or came to my mind when uh, I had my mask on and. Uh, photos were being taken and they were like one two three cheese and I'm like I am smiling like I'm smiling through my eyes I'm trying really hard (laughs) Um, and it's another one of those realizations like yes you have your mask on it's one of those I suppose like 2020 2021 type of uh, results of what it's like to always wear a mask but still trying to carry a lot of these day-to-day normal routines or things like taking a photos or sneezing where it it like suddenly reminds you that like yeah you you are wearing one when it's become so normalized now which is a good thing yeah do you have a good smize do you think when you're like masked and smiling that it comes through you know that's a great question I would hope so um I think so I think I think so eye contact actually for me is something that's really critical. And mm-hmm. so I I would say generally I'm a pretty expressive person. And so I also really try to maintain solid eye contact with anyone that I'm holding a conversation with. And so because of that, I would think that I would try to also reciprocate a lot of like my emotions and my expressions, not just with words, but also with my eyes. Yeah. So when it come t- comes time for smiling, yeah, I, I think I can smile through my eyes. What about you? I think so. I was looking at some family photos that we just took and being like, does it does it come through? I think so. Maybe this is like a side effect of pandemic. We've all become very effective at communicating with the top half of our faces only. Right. Like it's like really emote from the nose up. Right, right. It's a lot of eyebrow work. <laughs> it's a lot of eyebrow work. Yeah. And, you know, like if your eyes are glistening, <laughs> that's that's a hard one, though. Oh, man, that's really true. That's really true. Yeah. I was reading about how there's, um, you know, there's studies being done now as to whether or not children um, have to learn emotions and expressions through a different manner nowadays given exactly that like they they they're reading people through their you know top half of the face which is really different when you can read their lips and you know read their smiles and the wrinkles on their faces so it's interesting yeah yeah I work as a therapist we've talked about if we go back to work in person if we wear masks and I'm like I just couldn't do that I couldn't try and read someone's emotions or like really fully emote back to them without having like the full range of 
yeah, facial expression. Okay, okay. Otherwise, I'd be like, what's happening in your eyes? What are you doing with your eyebrows? Like, I'm trying to read really into your eyebrows because that's all I can see, which mm-hmm. seems <laughs> it seems incredibly tough. Yeah, yeah. And has your therapy sessions gone virtual? It's been all virtual, all mm-hmm. happening from uh, everyone's bedrooms, which mm-hmm. is wild and fascinating. Um, like sometimes you're hearing like roommates in the background, kids around. I've met everyone's pets. Um, turns out everyone in New York seems to own a cat, uh-huh. um, including me. But I didn't know how widespread that was until uh, now. Yeah. yeah. How have you found not being able to read their body language as well? Um, well, I can sort of still see them, but like we're not in person. So there's mm. not, there's a bit missing, but I can still sort of see their full body. Like we're not masked. I can see their faces. Mm. So you like, you learn to do a lot of like virtual reading, mm. um, and figure out like how to do virtual like body language, like lean in closer to the camera, like stare at the camera as a way of making eye contact, which is also kind of bizarre. Mm, I am terrible at that. I've never done that. I always look at myself which ends up being not the center of the camera. Yeah. Oh man, I found that trap too, of like looking at myself and being like, do I look professional right now? Do I look (laughs) bored? Do I look interested? Like what's, what's the, what's the energy I'm giving off? Yeah. Yeah. What's uh, your, um, what's your post pandemic priority? What's going to be the thing where you're like, we're back. Um, for me personally, uh, and I felt that a lot last night, um, I was going to the, uh, soft opening of my climbing gym and so for me it's getting back into climbing um, and that's uh, bouldering and mm-hmm. it's something that I've been uh, ha- hadn't had the opportunity to do for well over a year um, because it's closed down I also moved and so um, I hadn't realized At this point in the date, I jumped in to let them know that their date had ended and let them say their farewells. Before this date with Ben and Teresa, I don't think I would have thought sneezing could be such an in-depth topic, but when Ben mentioned dad sneezes, I am so glad I was on mute because I was cracking up. My dad sneezes reverberate throughout the house to the point that we would joke and say, was that an earthquake? Do you think Ben and Teresa will continue their shower thoughts conversation? Maybe while rock climbing? Tune in to the end of the season to find out. That's all we've got for you today. Shoot us a message on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook at The Blink Date or at Date in a Blink to let us know what you think. If you want to sign up to participate in Date in a Blink, visit our website at www.theblinkdate.com. In the meantime, thanks for joining for this episode. We hope you enjoyed listening and look forward to talking with you again next time.